Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, two knives from Vlad over at VDK Knives. And we're going to look at the GOAT, both the large and the small. Uh, this is part of Vlad's new kind of budget line offering. Um, you guys are probably familiar with some of his other models, um, namely the War Admiral, which has been a very popular model for him and one that I see people constantly requesting that he bring back. Uh, my favorite has been the uh, Impaler, which was an integral, um, his first integral model, and kind of a, you know, Warren Cliff style blade with a super aggressive harpoon. Do one quick size comparison, pretty much in line with the goat. And then the other model that I have from him um, is the Pharaoh, which is a small, um, really aggressive Persian design with that upswept blade. And that, I think, is his smallest so far. So anyways, he decided to come out with a budget line instead of using, you know, M390 and S35VN and titanium. Um, he decided to do a G10, D2, coated blades, um, still flippers, still running on bearings, um, but obviously less expensive to produce. So we'll go through specs, overall impressions, and details. For specs, we've got our usual suspects here with the Kershaw Dividend for the small size and the Para 2 kind of on the larger size of things here. So um, we'll start with the specs on the small. Blade length is 3 inches. Um, the Well, the cutting edge is 3 inches. The blade length itself is about 3.5 inches here on the small. Uh, overall is about 6.8 uh, when the knife is open. Handle length is about 4.25. So fairly basic there. Uh, blade stock is 0.16. Here we are next to the dividend, and if I haven't mentioned, it's a liner lock, a stainless steel liner lock, and it does run on ceramic bearings, so flipper, opening hole, you guys can see all of that. So now the large model here, uh, this one's in the, obviously the tan G10, this one's in black G10, but on this one, the cutting edge is 4 inches, and the blade length is 4.5. Um, I think measuring all the way back to the pivot here. Um, but handle length 4.8, overall 8.8, .8, so just shy of, you know, kind of that 9 inch mark. It's definitely a big knife. It feels like a big knife. Um, blade stock on both is 0.16, and again, both bearings, both ceramic bearings, ceramic detent, um, you know, kind of same materials for each. You just get to choose the size. Um, and the price on these is 125 each for the large or the small. And so that is pretty much the specs for the most part. Um, let's go with the large here and kind of take a look at the action on this thing. So here's the flipper tab. I like the geometry on it. It's got some jimping. And there is jimping here on the handle right where the flipper tab is. But thankfully... Your finger lands back here because of the shape and you're not coming down on the jimping, which I definitely appreciate because I hate when my finger lands on jimping on flippers. So uh, action is very good, especially with this larger, heavier blade. Middle finger flick it. Open it with your thumb. You can roll it open too. Um, when you're rolling it open, you want to make sure your finger's not too close to the top and you're dragging around the out of the edge of the handle, so yeah. So that's what the action on this one looks like. Now this is a hawk bill blade, which is a pretty kind of ballsy move. I mean, Vlad has always marched to the beat of his own drum, kind of done his own thing. Um, you know, I mean, look at the War Admiral. Um, very interesting, very unique design, super wide. But, you know, with his designs, kind of as unique as they are, they've all been well received. I mean, honestly, I'm coming to this video a bit late. I'd intended to do it a couple weeks ago before Blade Show, but things got crazy. So um, I think most of, I mean, they're almost all sold out, um, I think, last I heard. So um, I'll put links to his website where you can check. There are a few retailers on the web who also stock these, but um, I don't know. Just look at his website. So Hawkbill Blade, um, you know, the D2 in, um, in coating it is obviously nice. It's got uh, what feels like a hollow grind here on this one. I do believe it is a hollow. Yeah, yeah, it definitely feels like it, but it comes down to a pretty thin edge and obviously beefs up kind of uh, midway through the blade, but 
Um, I mean, it, it slices pretty well. The hawk bill, of course, is going to give you a really good pull cut. So, you know, box opening, maybe some limited food prep, uh, things of that sort. Um, but the D2 is going to hold up fairly well. Feels like they left uh, kind of a toothy edge on this one, which is where D2 is going to excel. Um, D2's obviously got fairly large carbides, so um, nice toothy edge. I've only done limited cutting with this one up to this point. It's It's been a busy couple weeks, but I had no problems. Um, now, so that's the blade. Opening holes chamfered all the way around. Again, 0.16 blade stock, fairly reasonable. Not too thin, not too thick. Now, the, um, the handle kind of have this, uh, I don't know, frag or gear pattern G10. Um, this stuff is pretty grippy. It it's kind of has that that G, the uh, cold steel kind of G10 feel to it. So going in and out of the pocket it is it is going to be rough on the jeans, that's for sure. Um, you can pull up on the pocket clip though to get it in and out, but um, yeah. And it's got a two screw construction. I kind of like that. I do like that it gives you a nice grip area when you pull this thing out of the pocket. Um, and you, you definitely need some traction because it's going to want to stay in there. G10 backspacer. The fit and finish is excellent overall. I mean, you know, again, We Knives does a very, very good job. So Now, ergonomically, this large one, um, as you guys can see, the way the handle is shaped, it does force your hand into very specific positions. So, um, you know, you can either come back on it and wrap your pinky around this rounded, the bottom here. Let's see if I can show you guys. Wrap your pinky around it. You can come back, kind of choke back on it. Or you can, you know, try to choke up on it. Although your middle finger is going to be right in the middle of that hump. You know, in a, in a fairly light grip, it's not that big of a deal. But if you want to, you know, really bear down and white knuckle this thing, um, obviously you're going to feel that hump. So, um, I don't know. I think... I think it would have been better with a more neutral grip, um, but you know I don't know if they had to do it that way because of the lock bar or something. But anyways, um, it's it's going to be essentially your hand size is really going to affect how well or how good this feels in the hand. Um, you know my middle finger rests right on the hump there, so um, in a, a normal looser grip for standard cutting, it's fine. But yeah, anyways. So let's take a look at the action. Really nice. And this one's got more break-in to do, obviously. Uh, the width is fairly uh, wide here. It's, you know, two inches or so. And obviously that's going to take up quite a bit of pocket uh, real estate. So you want to be mindful of that as well. Um, they are numbered. And again, the D2 steel. But, um, yeah, good fit and finish. Unique design for sure. Uh, let's take a look at the smaller one. Um, now, I, I do like larger knives, but honestly, the ergonomics of the smaller one fit better in my hand. Essentially, you have a three-finger grip, and then your pinky kind of wraps around the, you know, the butt of the frame there. So, um, this one feels better in my hand, um, just due to my hand size and the way it's kind of put together. But again, the Black G10, stainless steel liner lock. Lockup is very, very solid. We can Yeah, no movement whatsoever. So that was a that was a pretty hard spine whack. I'm sure that I blew out someone's eardrums just a moment ago. But again, same maybe it is a flat grind. Kind of sweeps from kind of a hollow to a flat. Um yeah, I think it's a flat ground, so disregard the hollow. But it comes down to a pretty keen edge here. It's probably in line with the parrot. It's probably around 0.25. So. Anyway, similar construction. Again, super grippy G10. This one is numbered as well. But this is the small goat. So large, small. Let's do kind of a side-by-side -side here. So you can see the difference. Quite a bit there. It's kind of nice when uh, when someone releases a model and they do a large and a small um, because then it gives people options as far as you know. Do they want large? Do they want small? They're both available at the same time. You know, it's not like one came out and then the other a year later. So 
anyways all right so i guess i mean we'll leave it there i'm that's pretty much it interesting design um ergonomics can be very hand specific excellent fit and finish uh super grippy g10 and uh good action so leave it to vlad to come up with something interesting and unique and something that no one else is doing um he's actually kind of delving a little bit more into custom knives now he did some fixed blade and some fixed blade auctions on his Instagram and Facebook. Um, I know he has some new designs in the works as well. I don't remember what they are at this point. Um, I think he showed it to me when we were at Blade Show. Um, but anyways, you can follow him on Instagram or his website. I'll put links in the description box below. Uh, Dr. Frunky also did a video on these. Um, I, his thoughts were honestly pretty much in line with mine, but his video went up a few weeks ago, so perhaps most of you guys have already seen that video. But thanks for watching. Um, more videos to come. I've got a lot to do. I need to do all my post-Blade Show videos now uh, that I think I'm caught up with all the pre... almost. I'm almost all caught up with the pre-Blade Show videos. So, anyways, guys, thanks again for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you liked this video. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. It's all the same to me. And I will see you guys soon. Take care.